What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com, H-A-W-G Sports.com. It's been a while. Been a while since we had a studio show. In fact, this is the first show of 2023, so you know we've got a lot to cover. Danny West is going to hop on with us also to help us talk a little bit about transfer portal and recruiting stuff. And we got basketball, a lot of stuff to talk about. We're going to get to it all. All that and more on today's episode of Hogsports Live. <laughs> And before we get started, I want to remind you there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can always tune in on Facebook Live. If you haven't thrown us a five-star review, take a moment to do that on Apple Podcasts. We have not had we have not had a single review on our Apple Podcast channel in 31 days. So if you haven't done it, take a moment to do that. Also available on YouTube, be sure to throw us a like or a follow on both Facebook and YouTube. Also available on Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite podcast. And Hawk Sports is just $1 right now for your first month at HAWG Sports. Dot com. Let's start off with a little bit of basketball, just to touch on some things. Obviously, Curtis Wilkerson's got you covered with basketball. You need to tune into his show, Hog Hoops Live, which is on a different YouTube channel. It's on the same Facebook page, uh, same podcast platform, uh, but it does have a different YouTube page. But go check out Curtis's Hog Hoops Live. He also does some stand-ups and stuff after games also. But Arkansas fall in 72-59. Uh, to Auburn. It's their second straight road loss. They also lost to LSU on December 28th, 60-57, sandwiched between their win over Missouri, 74-68. Just having a hard time scoring. I mean, they can't hit a three. They were terrible at the free throw line. Last game they were, let's see, Anthony Black was 13-16 from the free throw line. The rest of the team was 6-16. of That's just not going to get it done on the road. Like one of – what one of nine, I can't even remember how many three pointers they shot, but they only made one. Just a uh, just a bad shooting day, and unfortunately, I, I just fear that's kind of how things are going to be for a while until hopefully they get Nick Smith back, who's in Los Angeles rehabbing his knee, hoping for February. He's going to be out January, hoping for February if he's a hundred percent by then. It's crazy also because Arkansas goes into this with five potential first-round draft picks. (laughs) But two of them are hurt. Trevon Brazil obviously out for the season. Hopefully Nick Smith Jr. not out for the season. You've also got Jordan Walsh who's – you know, I thought he stepped up a little bit. He disappeared a little bit um, in the Auburn game. But Jordan Walsh is another. um, Ricky Council, of course. Anthony Black. But that probably leads the country right now. Uh, there's an article by Adam Finkelstein, Finkelstein on 24-7 Sports just talking about that, how Arkansas kind of leads the country in potential first-round draft picks. Pretty cool distinction. Kendall Browles. Well, this was wild, unexpected. I mean, it's not a, ex, unexpected that Kendall Browles would be targeted because we see it happen. Oh, I forgot to record the thing. Dadgummit. Hmm. I'm not sure what I want to do now. All right, we'll just keep going and we'll download it later. All right, so All right. I hadn't been doing the show for a while, so I forget all the little nuances, but yeah, got to record it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Kendall Browse to remain at Arkansas despite courtship from SEC rival Mississippi State. The whole thing seemed preposterous that they would actually get him. Now, I get the angle of being courted by another school, you use that to leverage a, a raise. We all know his agents, Jimmy Sex, and we know how this song and dance work. We've seen it several times. So the thing that was kind of wild was just how confident Mississippi State people were. They're insiders and stuff. Um, how confident they were that this was going Mississippi State's way. They were going to offer too much money. Sam Pittman didn't give him enough control of the offense, all of these things. Which, again, none of it added up except for the idea that they seemed so confident that this was just going to, this was going to happen. First and goal type stuff, about to punch it into the end zone. Of course it didn't happen. And Mississippi State's still scrambling, trying to find an offensive coordinator. But, of course, it didn't happen. There's too much to come back to for Arkansas. K.J. Jefferson's already announced his return. Some people are saying, like, K.J. Jefferson's going to leave with Kendall Browse to go to Mississippi State. Just just absurd. 
So, K.J. Jefferson's coming back. Sam Pittman's in his fourth year. It's a money year. Just the optics of it, you can't lose your offensive coordinator to an SEC rival school. You just can't do that. You can't allow that to happen. The optics of it are terrible. Like, you can fire a guy, but you can't have him leave on his own if you're that school. (laughs) So, just kind of a weird dynamic, but just a little – a little wild there that uh, that that all happened. So we can expect Kendall Browse to get a new uh, contract extension. I think that's pretty obvious. I've actually broken down where Arkansas stands right now with all of their salaries. Currently, I have them at six point oh four million dollars for the ten on field assistant coaches. That doesn't include Ben Souders, who's making four hundred thousand. Sam Pittman, with that, all total eleven point two nine million. And Kendall Browse is obviously going to get uh, a pay increase. Now, that also includes Dominic Bowman, who is no longer with the team as cornerbacks coach. He was making 350000 His contract was set to expire at the end of February this year. Now, just looking at these contracts, they all include other things. There's like, you know, you get a half month of your salary. These are all pretty standard for assistant coaches. A half month salary for appearing in the SEC championship and a one month salary for winning it. Okay, those aren't. Those aren't, you know, individual. You just get one month. You don't get one and a half month if you win the whole thing. Um, Three months for winning the national championship, so on and so forth. They get like – all the assistants get like $7,200 a year for a car allowance, which breaks down to about $600 a month car payment. Um, $2,000 Nike Elite, all that stuff. Club memberships to Fayetteville Country Club or Paradise. Although Pittman gets a little bit more. He gets a little bit higher car allowance. He could also be a member of the Blessings – and all the others, you know, just a few different things, extra perks. So Kendall Browse right now is at one point two five million. He was at one one million last year, I think, and then just went up to one point two five. Next year he's scheduled to get, um, or excuse me, no, the same next year. But he's going to get this whole thing's going to get redone. Okay. If Browse had left Arkansas for Mississippi State, he would owe technically Mississippi State would twenty percent of his annual salary back. So. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars would have would have gone back to Arkansas. Cody Kennedy's at seven hundred thousand. That's pretty typical. Your offensive lineman as the non coordinator uh, is going to get the usually the biggest salary just because they deal with fifteen to seventeen scholarship players more than anybody else. Jimmy Smith three hundred sixty thousand through twenty four. Kenny Guyton three hundred forty thousand. Morgan Turner, the new tight ends coach, three twenty five. Travis Williams at one point one. 1.1 million. New co-defensive coordinator and defensive backs coach. It hasn't been officially said he's defensive backs coach, but that's what he'll be. 700,000. Deke Adams, 400,000. Scott Fountain, 515,000. And then Ben Souders, which doesn't count against the totals, at 400,000. So that's where things are right now. Generally, a coach is going to owe 20% of his annual salary if he takes another job. In the case of a coordinator – that's not going to be true if they take like a head coaching job. It's more like eighty thousand that they would owe instead of two hundred fifty thousand or or something like that. Just a little insight on where Arkansas stands right now, and, and that number's about to go up. It went up fifteen percent last year to this year, also. I thought this was uh, cool, but not really. It wasn't necessary. Just going back to the bowl game. Arkansas won 55-53 in, in three overtimes. It was the third best bowl game of 2022. Listed as the third best bowl game. Number one, it was the Peach Bowl, Georgia 42, Ohio State 41. That was a great game. Cotton Bowl, Tulane 46, USC 45. Incredible late comeback by Tulane. And then the Liberty Bowl, Arkansas 55, Kansas 53. Was the rule that – do we get to start calling Kansas Kansas now? So, it never should have gotten to that, obviously. Ridiculous call on the fumble there at the end of the game where Arkansas was up 15 points. Never should have been ruled a fumble. And then it never should have gotten to three overtimes because of the ludicrous uh, targeting call against Quincy McAdoo that has since been overturned by Steve Shaw, national head of officials. Just pathetic officiating in this entire game. I don't want to get into the whole game, but – because we talked about it on the walk and talk, but it never should have been the third best bowl game of the college football season 
it's that because of complete incompetence by the officiating. This is, uh, I thought this was interesting. I had a Kansas fan on my walk and talk who was super butthurt about losing the game. Um, so he watched the walk and talk, and this is how every fan does after my walk and talk. You never give this any respect or anything. But the walk and talk is for Arkansas fans. It's me and you walking out of the stadium together, chatting about the game, okay? Not talking about Kansas. Your disrespect for Kansas football program is exactly why you're Arkansas. You've never won it. This is a Kansas fan. You've never won anything, and until you start realizing your place in college football world, you never will. It's a Kansas fan. The worst Power 5 football program in the country, historically. Like, I like pulling for Kansas, but this guy makes it really difficult. Kansas football. This guy makes it difficult. And then he mentions a, a, a blatant uh, jersey pull. Like, that's you're, you're going to seriously complain about officiating? Here's what else he says. Talks about his football program. We do just fine. Talking about if it's in the SEC, especially <laughs> considering it's, it's the sport that is considered secondary at the university. Look, dude, there's a lot of teams out there where football is secondary to basketball that still – are pretty darn good. Take Alabama, for example, coming into Fayetteville this week on Wednesday for basketball, seventh-ranked team in the country. And then he starts talking about the BCS game that Kansas won 14 years ago. BCS games are the equivalent to modern-day college football games. How many how many of these elite-level games has Arkansas ever won? I'll save you time zero. <laughs> This guy's pointing to something that happened 14 years ago. Never mind the fact that they've had 14 straight losing seasons since that date. I'm only seeing Arkansas fans crying about the rest. KU fans watched a Heisman front runner for 2023 absolutely dismantle another overrated SEC team. Je- Dude, you lost the game. And last time I checked, Caleb Williams was playing for USC, not Kansas. You think he's – you have to win a lot of games – to have a quarterback be a Heisman front runner. Nobody's got him as a Heisman front runner. Just complete delusional. You all are finally realizing the SEC means nothing to anyone outside the South. No, it's not true. SEC is not a media creation. We came into your region and ab- absolutely manhandled your little squad. <laughs> <laughs> you lost the game. It never should have been a game. This is just comical to me. He goes on and on. He's got like a ton of comments. Kansas fans are extremely excited about the future of our QB, wide receivers, and other personnel. We're returning something like 85% of our current roster. 85% of your roster that lost seven of their last eight games, and you're excited about it. You lost seven of your last eight games, and you're pumped up about it returning 85% of the roster. That's not how college football works. You have to go and improve your roster through the transfer portal. you got to cut some guys out and bring some guys in. It's been a little more dramatic for Arkansas with 22 guys having entered the portal. But right now they're at seven pretty solid ones coming in. And if you look at what they did last year with transfer portal, eight of the guys they came in, they hit on every single one of them. Not the same, quite the same feeling from Arkansas. Wonder why that is. Anyway, just a bunch of terrible takes uh, from a Kansas fan who lost the game and act, is acting like they won, and they should have lost it by even worse. But the officiating was just ridiculous at the end. Should have been a fifteen-point walk-away win for Arkansas. So I've got Arkansas. I believe at twenty-two right now. The last guy to enter was Trent Gordon. That's been a little bit now. When is that? That was January 3rd. So it's been a little bit since uh, anybody's an- entered the transfer portal. Obviously, you would expect that at this point. There's no benefit in entering the portal today. If you were going to enter the portal at the latest would have been like the day after the bowl game, like right around when, when Simeon Blair entered it. So that's 22 scholarship guys. A lot of people are like, Arkansas has 28 guys in the portal, but you know a lot of them are walk-ons. Some of them are key losses. You know, some of them aren't. I've got Arkansas at 74 scholarship players right now. 74 total, so they can bring in 11 more. It's 34 on offense, 37 on defense. That's including players who aren't yet on campus, players who have signed and enrolled. I also conclude Shamar Easter on that, who has not uh, signed with Arkansas, but is committed right now. His official visit is January 15th. 
So 34 offense, 37 defense, three specialists, 74 total scholarship players right now. Arkansas has – I know he doesn't want to be called Al Walk, Walcott. It's Al for a – I'll ask Danny what it is, but I know Danny told me his mom likes him to be called his full name, but we've got him listed as Al right here, and I'm not sure what, what the full name is. But Al Walcott, safety from Baylor, really good player for them last year. Lorando Johnson, also a cornerback for Baylor. Antonio Greer, which was kind of an interesting deal, linebacker from South Florida. Greer committed and signed with Arkansas and then said he's open and then recommitted on, I think, the 7th after his visit. So they kind of solidified a wavering. So the way it works also, when I say signed, it's not a national letter of intent. It doesn't bind the player to the school, okay? What it does is binds the school to the player to guarantee a scholarship, Okay, so the player is guaranteed a scholarship when he fi- signs a financial aid agreement for him. But he can still go somewhere else, as we saw with Miles Slusher. I believe Slusher signed with Louisville anyway, but Slusher is now going to Colorado. So the school is bound to the player. The player is not bound to the school under a financial aid agreement for him. Okay, so – and then John Morgan, who's been committed for uh, a while out of pit – the defensive end there, nice looking pickup there. Andrew Armstrong, another guy who's been committed for a while. Jacoby Criswell, Josh Braun, um, offensive lineman Josh Braun, quarterback Jacoby Criswell, Andrew Armstrong, wide receiver. They've got room for 11 more. They got room for 11 more, and that isn't included anybody else because there's another transfer portal window that opens, I think, in April. It's a 14 day window, much shorter. This one's 45 days, about to kill poor Danny. In fact, let's get to Danny. Let's have him talk a little bit about what's going on. For those of you who don't follow Danny West, you can follow him at Danny West 24-7 on Twitter. He's the Hog Sports recruiting analyst and has been with us for, I don't know, 12 years. Danny, how's it going? It's going, man. What's up? Long time no talk. Long time no talk. Uh, This is the first show of 2023. We haven't done a studio show since we previewed the bowl game. The last thing I did was the walk and talk after that. And I'll be honest, Danny, you're probably the same way. I mean, I, I came back. I went to Memphis. Right, we had Christmas. And then the next day I drove all the way to Memphis, dealt with all the shenanigans there with no water, and my hotel room would not let me get in all that kind of stuff. Um, also said I might not have any heat. So, <laughs> so dealt with all that and then went back to Little Rock, had two more Christmases, Mom Christmas, Dad Christmas. Everybody's got to have their own Christmas. Came back up here. I was just wiped out. It took me probably until late last week to start getting back into a routine and feeling normal. You really didn't have any yeah. luxury of that because of the transfer portal. It's just been absolutely insane. Yeah, it's been crazy. Man, I was thinking about going into that portal a couple of times myself mm-hmm. the last few weeks. But, yeah, it's been crazy, man. You know, the, they've got to do something. I, You know, it's going to take somebody a lot smarter than I am. But yeah. they've got to do something. There's got to be something they can do next year to alleviate some of this stuff. Because, I mean, we could sit here and, and I could feel bad for myself all day. But these coaches, man, I can't imagine trying yeah. to prepare for a game. Uh, you know, and coaching changes, and it just seemed like every rumor that kept popping up about coaching changes came at the exact wrong time, mm-hmm. you know, right before a big official or right before somebody's about to sign in December. Yeah. That, they took some heavy blows there now. So um, I think, you know, when people ask me how they're doing in the portal, I think they're doing okay right now. I really do. I, there for a while, it was hard to find much to be optimistic about. It seemed like every – around every corner it was bad news you know what i mean yeah. those few weeks there but um man i like this walk I, I heard you talk his his first name i'm not sure i've got the correct answer but i don't think the mom will kill anybody for saying he's you know for calling him al but i think it's al fahim mm-hmm. walcott so i'm just gonna go with walcott just to be <laughs> safe but yeah. i like him man big safety big physical guy they've We've picked up a few here that I'm I'm really high on. I'm sure you want to get into them, but this walk I can go now. I like it. Yeah, Danny. I, what to your point? We've got an article on twenty four seven sports just with Sonny Dykes and Kirby Smart talking about it too. And Sonny Dykes like we're trying to prepare for the damn national championship game. I don't think you said it exactly like that, but <laughs> you, hell, you he should have. And uh, we had six visitors. We had six transfer visitors on campus last week. I mean, which is oh, which is ridiculous. And you look at like the teams that have transfer guys out, you know, leaving the program. Georgia, I think, has two guys that have entered the portal. Um, yeah. Like if you're a Georgia player, 
Obviously, you want to go to the national championship, be a part of the national championship team, finish out the season, but the portal's going to end for you. You're not going to have time to, like, right. you know, visit yeah, and all that stuff. Like, if you yeah, want to find another sense. home and you're on a championship, a playoff team or something, you're you're in you – know, it's going to be hard for you, but they've got to do something. There, Every college coach that you talk to across the country, everybody that's been interviewed is like, I want to see my kids at some yeah. point. I mean, I yeah. got a – it's Sonny Dykes was talking like, I got a 6-year-old, 9-year-old, 14-year-old. I want to see them. I mean, that's, that's a lot of kids. For, no, I'm <laughs> but that I mean, I like it. uh, it, it's nice. it's it's accurate, and and for me to say that, and for for you, and I know you're you're counting down the days. What are you thirty something days now at forty five? Um, I know you're counting down the days, but like for us, like December is the best month to be busy because ad revenue, mm-hmm. traffic is is up. Ad revenue is up, and traffic is up, and that's a good thing yeah. to have in the month of December. So for us to be saying something's got to change. I think that's saying as much as anything. Yeah. It's a lot, man. You know, it was always a lot, you know, just dealing with high school recruiting and, yeah. uh, you know, the few transfers that you did, that you did have on the table, but boy, it's a, uh, it's a complete nightmare right now. And I, I want to say maybe just push everything back, all the transfer stuff back and make them wait until the spring. But, you know, it's easy for me to say, I'm not the one, um, in their position either, you know, so I don't know what the answer is, but yeah, I think we go, lot, I think we go to 395 days yeah, and just add yeah, a month that. Mm-hmm. and we'll call well, it if we could do that. transfer Vember. Yeah. And we'll just add, we'll just add another month to the year. I, I don't see any other solution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's about what it's up against, man. They've, they've changed this recruiting calendar, you know, for high school recruiting mm-hmm. so many times within the last decade you know, I, I told you guys the other day that I was kind of comparing the old calendar from 10 years ago to what it is now and some of the downtime, not just for us, but for coaches uh, in the summertime. Mm-hmm. Man, that, you take that away now with all the spring officials and, um, my gosh, it seems like triple the amount of camps now, you know, and yeah. you got the spring evaluation period. Man, what used to be uh, their time to relax, ours to – Man, that's going away in now December mm. and uh, even the month of July, man. Uh, I did a study on it last year, and I found uh, my, my question was, when do commitments happen the most for Arkansas? And under Sam Pittman, the answer has been June and July. And I think that might surprise a lot of people to see July because it is a dead period. Mm. But so many of those guys, that holiday stuff, man, that's got to go. July 4th has kind of become a little, you know, signing day ceremony in the summer, and that – uh, that one there hurts you too now because i mean uh i mean it's just it never stops mm-hmm. and i guess that's my point it never stops we always used to like say that though danny more is added we always yeah. used to say recruiting just never ends and now it's it's just next level it's hard to keep up with everything uh but yeah, yeah i, I had to bring back the the flash cards trey i'm back on the index cards that's what, you know for years that's the way i would learn all these kids and mm-hmm. Uh, you know, throw their heights, weights, hometown, just the, the bare essentials on a on a three by five, right? Yeah. But now I'm doing that with all these transfers. It's the only solution I've found to halfway keep up with people like Walcott. I brought up my my thought on how to do it with Pittman. Did I tell you my thought on what to do? Tell me. Well, just if you want to transfer, you got to wait till the spring. Tough cookies. You don't get to have it all. That's a good lesson. You don't get to have everything you want. Everybody this day and age wants this. I want this because somebody else has it, and this isn't fair, and so Mm -hmm. it should be like this. Well, it's just ridiculous what society has become lately, and I don't want to get political or anything like that, but I'm just talking about transfer portal. Like, you just don't get to have it all. Guess what? You don't get to have it all. I'm sorry, but if you want to transfer, you got to wait till the spring. You don't get to go through spring ball, so there might be another guy at the institution that you want to transfer to that, you know, he's going to get a leg up on you because he's going through spring ball. So I think it would, one, deter people a little more from entering the portal, and two, it would make this chaotic December, which is chaos without the transfer portal. It's already chaos. It would make that a little bit less and also think that, you know, you end the season – and what do you do after that? You go home, you got, you know, Thanksgiving, or you got a little bit of break, I guess. Not Thanksgiving because the season runs there. But uh, you got right. a little bit of a break, and maybe you do a late Thanksgiving, and you're, 
you know, your aunts, your uncles, your mom, dad, brothers, sisters, friends, you see all those people, um, you're not playing enough. They're disrespecting you. You need yep. this. You need that. You can get some money now somewhere else. And you come yep. off of that, and the December 5th portal window opens, and you go home, and you're disgruntled, you know, and you enter the portal, and you, you do it on a whim. And, you know, so I, I just think that, hey, you can enter the portal. And, and people, well, coaches can leave in December. Coaches can do this and that. Players aren't coaches. Yeah. I can't just take a diamond and put it in my hand of flushes and uh, or uh, of of uh, of spades and and just say flush, you know? <laughs> I can't you, I can't man. take my bishop and move it straight up and down like a rook because it's a bishop. It's just different. It doesn't not everybody gets to do the same things. And I'll tell you something else when these players leave, <laughs> when a player leaves, they just leave. There's no money get back or anything. When these coaches leave, like even Dominic Bowman, when Arkansas hired him from um, from Marshall, they had to pay Marshall twenty thousand dollars. You know, he had a buyout. If if sure. if uh, Kendall Browse had left for Mississippi State, he would have owed Arkansas two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. There still would have been some kickback. You know, even for assistant coaches, not just the head coach, but even for assistant coaches, they still have to pay. You know, the rest of their contract out. So there is something you know but when a player leaves it's just you know you can develop a player for three years get him ready and everything and yes you benefit you benefit from the player too i'm not saying it's just one-sided um but then you 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 know use our facilities use our doctors use you know everything our gear all that stuff and then you just leave when you're about ready to start playing so i don't know i I'm, i'm a capitalist i know you are too danny and I believe the guys should get money. I'm not say, I don't think there should be any kind of cap on what kind of money you can get from uh, from a uh, endorsement deal. But that's the thing; they're not getting endorsement deals. They're getting money from collectives. Pay for play. Yeah, collect. You're you're donating money to a collective. This is what a lot of schools are doing. Arkansas hasn't finished theirs yet, but it's coming. Uh, but they're donating money to a collective, and from the collective, the collective has businesses sponsor the collective and the the business gets a little logo they get to put on their website and then a player who the collective has will tweet something out about the business and here's three hundred thousand dollars for doing yeah. that you know it's just it's just ridiculous that's where the problem is it's with the collectives um it's not with endorsement deals and things like that it's it's the collectives where you're and again you know you should be able to get if you're worth the money, then you're worth the money. But that's not what is exactly happening here with the the collective stuff. I think they just need to go to. I'm, I know I'm just talking, Danny, and I have you on, but I'm on a bit of a rant. I think they just need to go to paying these players. And if we do that, then there's so many better things that'll come out of it. First thing is open practices for media. You can dictate. Hey, we're going to have open practices, just like the NFL does. The NFL mandates that mm-hmm. they open practices to the media, open locker rooms afterwards. We can just go talk to who we want to talk to. Injury reports. You talk about improving fantasy football and stuff like that on the college level. Injury reports. Making teams put out injury reports instead of being so damn secretive. That's why they're closing all these practices. Make them yeah. put out their injury reports, make everybody on the level playing field in that regard, um, and pay these players' salaries, and that would probably put an end to a lot of this stuff and thus bump the transfer portal later. Trey Biddy for NCAA Commissioner 2023. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I'm enjoying the show, Trey. <laughs> Got you fired up on Are they the done? Are they board. done with uh, visits? No, is that – is that, is that, I, I know with not um, committing, but like – is there is sure. there another visit window coming up? Or is this that weekend. This weekend. Yeah, this okay. weekend. So the dead period ends uh, Thursday at midnight. Mm-hmm. So Friday at twelve oh one, you know, it's it's contact period again. So technically, yeah, you can still bring in, and not even technically, you can bring in more transfers this weekend if you'd like, and uh, I would expect they will because classes don't start until next week. So. I would expect a few more of those. Just heard from a, a, a non-transfer this morning, but certainly notable. Uh, Charleston Collins going to be back on the hill this weekend, four-star uh, defensive lineman from here in the state. So um, I would expect several this weekend, and we're right back into it. This mm-hmm. is going to be, you know, just I wouldn't call this a break this week, you know, midweek, but um, it should slow down a little bit. I think you'll see we're waiting on guys right now to make decisions you know yeah. uh, guys who were here last week we just saw one come off the board i mean 30 minutes ago uh, that's dante thornton wide receiver transfer 
out of Oregon, he committed to Tennessee. Uh, mm-hmm. Not really surprisingly, uh, they got the last visit there, and you know Tennessee's give them credit, man. They've got it going right now. So yeah. um, he's off the board, still waiting on Isaac Tesla out of Hillsdale College. He was here. We're just going to call him Tesla. Yeah, Tesla. <laughs> I'm with you. Um, probably going to come down b- between Arkansas and Iowa. There, um, if you held a gun to my head right now i'd appreciate it if you if you didn't but mm. if you did i'd probably guess iowa i think they took his best friend as a preferred walk-on um nil could be involved there so um anytime now i think uh he'll be tomorrow i want to make sure i'm clear on that but anytime some of these guys could pop we're talking about uh weaver um, the uh, transfer wide receiver from Is South xavier? Florida. xavier or yeah, xavier xavier yeah. Xavier Weaver, a uh, wide receiver from US, USF. Um, Kane uh, Barong, a tight end from uh, Notre Dame. All mm-hmm. these names run together. I apologize yeah. for stuttering there. But uh, Jake Roberts, tight end out of North Texas. He was in last week. And wouldn't you know it, Trey, as soon as he leaves here, Oklahoma comes in and offers him. Mm-hmm. He's, he's from basically Norman, Oklahoma. But uh, he was already scheduled to take that trip to Baylor. And right now it sounds like Baylor may have the upper hand, not Arkansas nor Oklahoma, where he's mm-hmm. from. So a lot of moving parts here. Of course, NIL can change things in a hurry. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, you picked up the uh, corner from Baylor uh, last week, Lorando Johnson over the weekend, as well as his teammate. We've already talked about Walcott, the big mm-hmm. safety. And uh, it's been a pretty good run for them so far. Now, they've still got work to do, uh, several needs. I think they've got what – 10, 11 spots left available. Mm, yeah, 11. Account. I got them at, 11, 11, I got them at 74 okay. right now. Okay. So you think about some of these needs, I don't think it's any big secret that defensive back uh, corner is starting to look a little bit better, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I hesitate to say that based on being 131st in pass defense, but I think when you, when you look at Nudie coming back, we saw what Quincy did kind of out of nowhere. Uh, we'll see if, if he goes back to offense. Been a little bit of message board buzz about – uh, potentially going back we'll see what happens with that but you've got something to to work with there you've got day day coming back malik is back uh Jalen lewis is a guy that you know i don't think we can forget about he saw a little action there against kansas and then Jalen braxton man i think it'll be tough to keep him off the field even as a true freshman next year now you throw in uh snacks johnson that's what he prefers to be called uh so you could have snacks and s-n-a-x-x Yep, yep, that's it. So snacks and moody, and that's a typical Tuesday night at my place. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> so, so Thornton's off the board. Um, they did get Marlon Crockett as a walk-on wide receiver out of Memphis. Yeah, I, f- I failed to mention Marlon. I apologize mm. for that, but uh, he came up as an unofficial visitor, obviously from Searcy, Arkansas. Came out two years ago, signed with Memphis. Um, really hasn't seen a whole lot of action so far in his college career, but wanted to come home and, and be a Razorback, and they gave him the opportunity to make that happen. He, mm. he jumped all over it. So, so for Marlon. Thornton Good was kid. like the number 49 ranked overall prospect in the country coming out of high school. He did not put up significant stats at Oregon I'm not I wouldn't say I'm too hurt over that I mean a guy with obviously yeah, a lot I of potential but I like guys that produce in college not just high-ranked guys um Tesla I really like him Man, freak College. show, ain't he? Yeah. <laughs> and, Dude, I knew you would like him as soon as I saw him. I said, I got to tell Trey to watch this guy. Yeah. And I, I don't know that I ever did. I like him a lot. and Sorry to cut you off. I know he went to Colorado on a visit, and then there's Iowa in the mix, and is in Arkansas, I guess. They need to get they need to get somebody, though. They need to get one of these guys uh, just because, I mean, we've seen the wide receiver room, you know. and Yeah. Um, yeah. So, need to get some of those guys. So, we're waiting on – uh, Tesla, we're going to call him Tesla for now. Tesla, yep. uh, we're waiting on Weaver. Weaver. We're waiting on uh, Barong, Jake Roberts, Kane Barong, Antonio Greer's on board, Lorando Johnson's on board. Waiting on DJ Taylor. Is DJ Taylor still in play? Potentially. Out of Potentially. Arizona State? You know that they, they haven't offered him yet. They did bring him in for a visit. I, I know he really liked it mm-hmm. uh, or seemed to, so – We'll see. Uh, but until that offer is out there, you know, we've seen that a, a few times now. A couple of these guys just saw Arlen Bruce on Twitter a minute ago. He was uh, speaking of Iowa, uh, the transfer wide receiver from Iowa that they brought in uh, in December for a visit unoffered. So it's been a couple of those. I, 
you know, I think the, the trend between both of those two, if I had to guess um, what they're doing that for, they want to verify size. You know, when, you're, yeah, when you've got a guy who's listed at 5'10", I, which I think both of those guys are, there's always a chance they're 5'8 right? So, um, yeah. you know, anytime oh, I a, see a there's 5 There's a great anybody, chance if they're 5'10", they're 5'8 yeah. 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 Danny, how many guys have we seen come in here where Arkansas fans have been like, oh, got to get this guy. And then he gets there and we know behind the scenes, you know, they just brought in a 5'10 defensive tackle who's listed at 6'1 yep. and mm-hmm. uh, and everybody's acting like, oh, I can't believe we lost that guy to so-and-so, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it's like, yeah, well, that that's not, not really what and happened. you don't want to come out and call him exactly. you know, tiny or anything, but there's been a lot of that. So Defensive um, tackles shouldn't be, I'm six foot and a half inch. They shouldn't be shorter than me. In my opinion, not on no, this, not on this be. level. All right, I'm Danny. With you. But yeah, speaking of that, just a quick rundown. Uh, I would say Trey probably. Speaking of D tackles, I think you you could probably use another one. Mm-hmm. We saw Jordan Dominic get out of here. Probably another pass rusher. I like what they're bringing in with the outside linebacker from from Pitt. Uh, you mentioned Greer at linebacker. It wouldn't hurt my feelings if they got another linebacker. You yeah, know? me either. Think about. Um, lack of experience in that room i think offensive tackle if you could find the right one people need to remember there's going to be another 15 day window starting may 1st Mm -hmm. through the 15th so you know it's not over it's it's a long way from being over now you wouldn't expect hundreds thousands going into the portal in a two-week stretch there but should be quite a bit more movement after spring ball so this thing's far from over um fortunately and unfortunately yep all right brother Appreciate you hopping on extended segment. All right, all right, everybody. That's Danny West. Again, follow him at Danny West twenty four seven. He's the Hog Sports recruiting analyst and best guy in the business. You can go check out Danny's Big Red transfer board. There's a couple dozen names on there. We just went over some of the guys that just recently visited. Talked about a few other guys, but there's a there's about twenty four names on there right now, and he's got them listed as hot, warm cold all of those things so go check out the big red transfer board i think he just put that out the updated version they need some help at wide receiver i re-ranked arkansas's transfer hall this is how important transfer portal is and i get asked like should arkansas be like paying recruits or paying transfers. There was a discussion on the Razor's Edge Premium Forum, another reason to join Hog Sports. Great discussion on the on the, on the the forum there. Um, but there's discussion, should Arkansas be paying, you know, NIL money to transfers or high school guys? And the answer is both, <laughs> really. It, technically, you're not supposed to, like, just pay high school guys, uh, but that's pretty much what people are doing. Uh, you're supposed to, like, bring them in. It's like, hey, this is what maybe we could do for you in NIL kind of talk. But uh, you absolutely – they absolutely should be coming up with great NIL deals for transfer guys above anything else. Because So they brought in eight transfers last year, eight scholarship transfers. Every single one of them hit. Every single one of them played a significant role for Arkansas last season. In fact, I think some of them were underrated. Drew Sanders, I, I've re-ranked all of them. I went back and re-ranked all of them. So, Drew Sanders was a 99 overall in high school. They dropped him to a 92, which is, you know, a medium-low four-star recruit. Uh, He absolutely should have been where he was in high school, uh, obviously. He's got the potential to be a first-round draft pick. I think Landon Jackson's another guy who could have been draft – could have been bumped up a little bit higher, probably should have been like a 94. Uh, Dwight McLaughlin is another one who – I think probably should be a 93. And when I say a 93, like I'm thinking NFL draft, that's probably about a sixth-round grade, not this year but eventually uh, for McLaughlin. Uh, I think Landon Rogers, 94, probably puts him somewhere in a, a fifth-round grade. He's a guy that's got, you know, he's a, you know, he was just a sophomore this year. So he's a much younger guy. I think Matt Landers has draftable ability. I put him at about a 92, which is about a sixth or seventh-round grade. Jaden Hazelwood, I think, probably in the same range, sixth or seventh-round grade. Jordan Dominic, who left, I think surprised us a lot uh, that he left. But, I mean, the guy had seven and a half sacks, which is fourth in the SEC. 91, maybe just outside of uh, NFL draft range. Latavius Brini. Brini started several nine games for Arkansas this year. 
But I'll stick with a three-star. I don't think Brini's getting drafted, so I'd say about an 88. Terry Hampton started like three games, played a pretty significant role. I think about an 88 is fine for him too. So eight transfers they brought in last year, eight transfers they hit on 100%. Every single one of those guys was a good player for Arkansas last year. Every single one of them helped Arkansas's roster, and a couple few of them uh, were stars for Arkansas. It's an important area of recruiting. Do not ignore the transfer portal. I love this article. Why we love college football, the storylines that reminded us of it. Max Duggan's journey from backup to Heisman runner-up. Bryce Young and Will Anderson rejecting the bowl game opt-out trend. A lot of transfer portal success stories like Bo Nix going to Auburn. Or excuse me, Bo Nix going to Oregon from Auburn. Uh, the Just the drama in the offseason with the conference realignment stuff, just with, um, you know, the Pac-12 schools, UCLA, USC, going eventually to the Big Ten. Of course, that already happened with the SEC the year before. Mike Leach stuff, sad, sad story, college football world, honoring him in different ways, on field, helmet stickers, things like that. NIL madness, I'm not sure. That's why I love college football, but it's definitely been intriguing. It's been the season outside of the season. A few teams getting monkeys off their backs. Little guys conquering the Giants. I don't know if we like that too much because Liberty did beat Arkansas, but the story they're talking about uh, was App State beating Texas A&M. Some great finishes, great celebrations, great semifinal games finally. Usually it hasn't been that. Greg Sankey spoke out a little bit, SEC commissioner. There's a lot of talk about like there's shadow bans or whatever with hiring coaches like Bobby Petrino not allowed in the SEC. I bought into that. I didn't think Hugh Freeze would ever be coached in the SEC again. Thought just kind of, you know, a shadow ban. But uh, Hugh Freeze back in the SEC at Auburn. Uh, Texas A&M hired Bobby Petrino. And Greg Sankey said, hey, that's that's their business. We talked a little bit about this other article a minute ago with um, Sonny Dykes' kids are 14, 11, and 6. He's like, I want to see them sometime. But December has just become absolutely insane for the portal. Okay. I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. I want to remind you one more time, if you like the show today and you haven't thrown us a five-star review on Apple Podcast, then you should. That's it. I'm not going to talk about all the other ways to watch and listen. Just it's been since December 9th, since anybody's left us a review on Apple Podcasts. And I know it's been, we haven't done a whole lot of shows in that time. Maybe that's probably part of it. But uh, if you like the show and you haven't taken a moment, uh, please go throw us that five-star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever else you listen to podcasts. But, um, you know, leave a rating, say something about the show that others can know what to expect, what you think about it. And uh, we certainly appreciate that. All right. I think we covered just about everything I wanted to cover. I want to say thanks to Danny West for hopping on with us and uh, appreciate all of you uh, chiming in and uh, or joining us. I didn't really get to questions today, even though we have a few. All right. That's it. I need to work on my exit. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks for joining me. This has been Trey Biddy with AugSports.com, and we'll catch you next time. 